Welcome to your favorite program, Renewed Hope Podcast. And I am your host, Lashek Shehu here. Uh, on this edition, on this episode with me, I have two lovely, you know, beautiful women beside me who are going to be um, dissecting and analyzing the Renewed Hope Manifesto of His Excellency Aswaju Bola Metunubu. On my right, I have Princess Atika Mam and Ajana, you know, also known as uh, MC Expensive. She will be doing a lot of justice to the manifesto. And on my other side here, I have Haja Barista Zaina Bubamawa. So they're going to be doing justice to a lot of topics. But before we go into the topics, you know, as it is um, enshrined in the manifesto, let me start with you, Princess. What does the Renewed Hope uh, manifesto mean to you? Thank you for having me and hello everyone. Um, the Renewed Hope Manifesto is a compendium of Atuajibola Ahmed Tinubu, the president elect of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, planned for Nigeria, ranging from the general Nigerian people to women when it comes to segregation to youth to people living with disabilities. You know, um, when I went through the Renewed Hope, I had the privilege of seeing the document before it was published because I was a member of the publication committee, you know, and then I was very happy, especially when he talked about women, he was very passionate, he was very, very particular and intentional about his plans for our women, talking about 35% informative action and talking about putting policies in place when he's uh, elected, which he has been elected now, so um, that is going to ensure that women are given uh, a place on the table and women are going to be carried along in his government. That he was also going to work with the legislative arm um, of government to ensure the policies and um, laws that will favor women are put in place in his administration. So it's something I'm looking forward to. He also talked about what he's going to do for you. So I'm like, whoa, what a time to be a woman and a youth in Nigeria. Okay, so this program. We, we we normally say, we normally tell Nigerians to cheer up that hope is here. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's like our slogan. So on that note, um, Barista, what does renewed hope mean to you? To me, the renewed hope, um, the slogan itself means yes. a lot because it's not uh, pretentious, telling us that we should, you know, have the first hope. The renewed hope knows that we have been hoping and hoping and hoping and now it is simply asking us to renew that hope and renewing that hope speaks to the fact that real hope is here and real change has come and that now finally there's going to be a re-emergence there's going to be a renaissance of hope as we imagine it to be from right back even in the 90s and even way before then. Um, Nigerians as a people are very hopeful and very positive and very optimistic. We are a people that will continue to hope and pray for good change and for prosperity. And I'm excited because I do believe within me and I say this on my honor as a Muslim that I believe that under Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, there is a renewal of hope. And that hope will be actualized into the prosperity that we so badly crave, the prosperity that we so badly need, because Nigeria is a blessed nation. But unfortunately, till now, we've not been able to get it right. And I tell you today, as sure as I live and breathe, that we are going to get it right under this leadership. Okay. I'm very excited. Yeah, I believe so too. And I believe um, princess also have you know the same belief. See, this is what this program is all about. Uh, we are going to be you know taking you through the lifestyle of Aswaju, his leadership qualities, his leadership acumen, and you know. As we grow as a country, we will need to be able to create an avenue for Nigerians to know that um, for any country to, for any society to grow, you know, the youth have to be carried along. And uh, here we have, we have um, uh, a president-elect, a soon-to-be president of the uh, Republic of Nigeria that believes so much 
in the youth of this country. So, looking at the manifesto now, which particular area of the manifesto is interesting to you that you think um, as well you should hit the ground running as as soon as he, uh, he gets into the office? aspect of security. The security is a big uh, challenge right now in the country. You see what's happening in the South East, the issue of unknown uh, gunmen. Um, you, you still go to the uh, North East and you still have the Boko uh, Haram insurgency going here, here, here and there. They've not been eradicated 100%. Um, but we have a couple of them who have come out to surrender and then um, who have also been granted um, amnesty. And you see what's happening in the southwest, especially the Kaduna axis. And um, so security is really, really uh, a big challenge in the country. So I'd like to see him bring in his expertise. He's one of those people, people who started a um, tax force system, you know, as a means of assisting the our government in terms of security so we'd like to see more I'd like to see Anasua do come today and then um I restructure Nigeria because we, we saw him do it in Lagos and um our transportation a problem you see insecurity when you're talking about insecurity in Nigeria it also uh, went to areas we never expected because um no one would ordinarily think of people ambushing for instance a train on a rail I mean so um Aswaju is one person that we know is able and capable and then we know with the right arsenals and um and good people around him people who are and he's one person who identifies talent and competence and so um i don't have an iota of doubt that we're going to have very very um competent and resourceful uh, uh, service chiefs as well as the national security advisor which is very very paramount in the aspect of security and do, together I know it's good. So that's an aspect I'm really looking forward to because without securing lives and property of the people, you won't be able to govern us. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 true. That's true. So Barista, um throw more light into this. In terms of um education. I saw in the manifesto somewhere that says there's gonna be a student loan or something. So how explain to us how do you think Nigeria you know, should expect the educational system to be transformed? You know, it's so funny because even as we are now, Nigeria has one of the cheapest public education systems that exist. And I'm talking even with tertiary um, institutions. And I think that um, as for education, um, I do have a lot of interest, but I thought that you would harp on the youth okay. because we have such a short amount of exactly. time. Yeah, yeah, I want yeah, us yeah. to speak to, okay. to issues yeah. that are important to us. So just like uh, Ataka said, the, the, the part that's more important to her is security. I believe that the part that's most important to me and why I would love to speak to it is, is youth, you know, the youth empowerment. Because um, we must have a government of succession. We cannot continue as a people to, to have the same people in government over and over again. You know, I know that there are some areas of governance where you need the experience that is needed, but then um, I think that we, there's something to be said about succession in government. And so, you know, and, and Atika is always making fun of me because I call myself a mentorship advocate. Okay. <laughs> I believe in mentorship because you need to bring the younger ones up. And then I love the fact that in this manifesto, Renewed Hope, um, Asio Ajibola Ametin, who was able to actually pinpoint areas that are most important and as young people when you look at it you get excited and i also love the fact that they do understand that the, the definition of youth is different for nigeria because according to the united nations youth ends at 35 but nigeria is not so and so even in like the, the, the absolutely you know i think that the manifesto even pushed it up to 50. so where um they were talking about having um I believe six um, cabinet members below the age of 50. So saying that 50 tells you that they do understand that some of us are not 35, but we're still considered members of the youth in Nigeria. So that's exciting to me. The fact that he has not only action plans, but he has backed them by actual figures. And so about 20% of um, the leadership of MDAs is going to be vested in people below the age of 40. Oh, okay. You know, exciting things like that. They gave it numbers. And, um, you know, when you're looking at, at things like poverty elevation and how he's going to create wealth among the youth, um, there, there are clear indications of 
programs and plans, strategies that are going to be put in place so that these things do happen, even with the NYSC. In fact, I was talking about mentorship. Do you know that in the Renewed Hope, there's a section under the Youth Empowerment where they say that they are going to make um, mentorship a systematic thing, an institutionalized thing. So they are going to work with two million, you know, leaders in the business world, two million of them, and work with them to become them, uh, mentors to people, bring people under them, you know, mentor them to greatness, to the ability to run their own businesses, and then back them up. And then the government is going to incentivize them. Yeah, so things like that are very important to me. So the Renewed Hope is very practical and it actually pinpoints those areas that all of us have interest in. So it's quite interesting. Yeah, thank you so much for your responses. Thank you for throwing you know, such a good light into um, the manifesto of uh, Asojibola Metunubu. And uh, I believe that um, um, from your submission, you know, security is highly very important for Nigeria at the moment. And then uh, you, uh, her barrister also made mention of uh, the importance of youth uh, inclusion and uh, women uh, involvement in politics. So, and I believe His Excellency Asoju is going to uh, make that happen for Absolutely. Nigeria uh, as we move forward. So, thank you so much. We've come to the end of uh, today's episode of Renewed Hope Podcast, and uh, I hope you join us next time for another wonderful uh, uh, guest that will be coming to, you know, dissect and analyze, you know, the policy hackathon of His Excellency Asoju Bola Ahmed Tunubu. Thank you so much. And on this note, I would like to say, cheer up Nigeria. Hope is here. <laughs>